welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Hello everyone and welcome to Sunday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy. On uh, the watch and warning map, uh, no watches or warning, but there's the flood advisory still out for the uh, Kenai River uh, because water, uh, water river levels from uh, Skelac Lake to the Kenai Keys are still above flood stage there. And that's now out uh, into Wednesday morning, and there's a uh, small stream and urban flood advisory here over the northern southeast coast, Juneau on up to uh, Skagway, and those and for the uh, creeks and streams in that area due to the heavy rainfall they've had, uh, bucket of rain falling today at Yakutat with uh, 3.69 inches. Yesterday uh, wasn't too bad here over the southeast coast. This was yesterday, early yesterday. And we had uh, low pressure here over the southwest interior, that pulling a lot of moisture up from the south, uh, heading up to the north initially, and then eastward as the jet stream shifted off to the east there. Otherwise, uh, you can see a break here over the interior, more cloudiness back through here, dropping down to the south into the Bering Sea. And then we'll see today a uh, pretty good wave developed and scooted right up uh, over Yakutat there, bringing the heavy rain to that area, two and a half inches falling in. Sitka, those are 24-hour amounts ending at 4 p.m. this afternoon. And uh, let's see, Valdez had about uh, 1.67 inches. Uh, or no, Cordova had 1.67. Valdez had uh, just about an inch of rain in the same time period. Lighter amounts down here to the south. Uh, net just picking up two-tenths of an inch uh, by contrast there. But as this uh, system lifted northward, got some pretty brisk winds in over the northern panhandle with gusts upwards of 40 miles an hour from the south blowing through Lynn Canal this afternoon. You can see about ready to push through the front just off the coast now, some more showers and clearing back behind, and uh, an area of rain pushing up across the Copper River Basin, and there was rain going on from, uh, well, Fairbanks on back to uh, Nabesna, McCarthy, Gulcana, and Cordova all reporting rain this afternoon as uh, that moisture continues to slide northward, sunshine up along the eastern Arctic coast, north slope areas, and uh, down to the south a little bit, breaks here from uh, the Noatak Valley, Kivalina, into the Seward Peninsula areas, and a little bit of clearing looks like showed up over the uh, Yukon Delta, as well as, as around the Pribilof Island areas, and Bristol Bay, with an area of rain right in through here, uh, with uh, low pressure, giving uh, cloudy skies and a lot of uh, areas of light rain here mixed with fog out along the coast. Thunderstorms breaking out this afternoon along the uh, uh, southern coast of Norton Sound here and a little bit inland. And then these showers uh, developed into some scattered and isolated thunderstorm activity uh, since that time just recently up here over the northwest part of the state with some scattered showers in across upper Yukon Valley, mostly south there. And then the rain with that system as it moves northward, uh, the front now approaching the southeast coast. And uh, that will continue to move through tonight. Uh, back behind northwest flow, keeping the clouds socked in here along the Alaska Peninsula. High pressure, weak system out here to the west. We'll see tonight uh, that kind of falls apart. Another weak one comes in to replace it. 
keeping Chimia in the IFR fog and light rain there. Still have an upper level trough right through here, getting some clouds, light rain and showers over the southwest coastal areas right up into uh, maybe the uh, some scattered showers this evening and tonight there for the uh, uh, Seward Peninsula areas on up into that low center. Another weak low center here over the eastern Brooks Range area and then just some scattered showers, isolated thunderstorms here over the interior and now that front pushing through so the uh, heaviest rain will be gone there from the southeast coast. Uh, it won't be quite as heavy or as continuous. There will be a lot less heavy and less continuous than what has been here behind the front but still that southwest flow ahead of this trough axis out in this area will keep it uh, kind of damp and cloudy but scattering out the showers a few showers here yet off the coast high pressure light winds low clouds and fog here bristol bay back along the bering sea and uh, up into the north as well this system here just sort of falls apart right in this area and pieces of it slide up to the northeast as another one approaches from the west there that's going to hold high pressure in over the southeast bering sea and bristol bay while again tomorrow scattered isolated thunderstorms along the western Alaska range back up mostly over the western interior here out to the uh, Seward Peninsula areas, Golovan White Mountain maybe uh, in that general area and then just isolated scattered back to the northeast. Mostly sunny I guess I could call it here with uh, scattered afternoon showers developing over the mountainous terrain uh, from the Kenai Peninsula right up across the Copper River Basin and into the Tanana Valley as well and uh, showers diminishing tomorrow and probably see some sunshine over areas of the southeast coast there uh, with nothing but high pressure back to the west, the frontal boundary down now along the Queen Charlotte Islands and so uh, going to go for a partly to mostly sunny day, at least in part, for the southeast coast on Tuesday. Uh, light winds, light northwesterlies along the coast and west of variable, very light over the inside waters. That same pattern will extend back to the west across the uh, Gulf of Alaska and on up uh, into Prince William Sound. Again, uh, Wrangell Mountains look for some afternoon, evening showers. And same thing for the Alaska Range, but partly sunny skies to so sit in the Manuska Valleys and Cook Inlet. This upper trough here kind of uh, sneaking in from the Bering Sea will bring uh, more clouds and some shower activity here into the southwest interior. Some of that will slip on down around Kodiak Island as well, but nothing too heavy. Uh, in that area, isolated thunderstorms, scattered showers again up over the northeast and Tanana Valley areas, but dry back to the west, dry up along the Arctic coast with light winds. Light winds also for the North Slope, a little more sunshine over the North Slope than what you see along the Arctic coast, kind of a weak onshore breeze there, keeping uh, occasional cloudiness in the area, but sunshine out to the west and high pressure holding here just east or northeast of the Perbilof Islands and light winds, low clouds, fog and drizzle possible uh, here right down to the Alaska Peninsula and uh, back to the west. A little bit more of a potent system here coming into the west but nothing uh, strong at all. Just uh, probably 20 knot winds ahead of that frontal boundary the way it looks at this point in time with some rain possibly reaching ADAC in the afternoon along with uh, some fog and lower flying conditions but uh, Temperatures today in the uh, upper 50s to lower 60s here over the southeast coast and um, mostly in the mid to upper 50s for the north gulf coast, 58 at Yakutat to 55 over at Cordova, Valdez had 54, Anchorage 61, Kenai 60, 63 down at Homer and 52 over at McCarthy with a 51 at Golcana. 55 in Northway this afternoon, Fairbanks up to 65 there, but uh, the rain dropping it down a little bit since then, 61 at, Gul at Talkeetna, and up to the north, uh, uh, 67 over at Eagle, and a 65 here at Bettle, 63 and Atuvik, and temperatures here along the Arctic coast, or up along the Arctic coast, range from 61 at uh, New Exit to just 39 with fog over at Wainwright and then back up into the upper 40s for Cape Lisburn, 63 in Kivalina, 64 Kotzebue, 63 at uh, Buckland and uh, mostly in the 60s here over the interior, 50, 67 there at Bettles, 57 Ambler and a 70 degree reading at Gullivan this afternoon, 62 in Nome, McGrath hit 57 and Bethel 58, about the same there, mid 50s for the coast, upper 50s for the Perbolofs, 54 in Alaska, Nikolsky had 50 degrees, otherwise uh, mid 50s, lower 50s all along the Aleutians, upper 50s to lower 60s for the Alaska Peninsula. 
Lows tonight in the 50s for the Panhandle, lower 50s or even upper 40s for the Copper River Basin. Northward up through the eastern interior, uh, possibly dropping below 40 degrees. 50s here, 50 to 55 over the west central part of the state. Upper 30s on the Arctic coast, otherwise uh, upper 30s to mid 40s. And that'll extend back uh, mostly in the upper 40s to lower 50s to the Seward Peninsula, Bering Sea in the 40s and Bristol Bay in the mid 50s. For the highs tomorrow, uh, 60s, lower 60s for the Panhandle there. Some areas a little cooler, mid 60s, South Central Alaska and the Copper River Basin. Otherwise, uh, into the Tanah Valley, uh, mid to upper 60s there. Same thing here for the North Slope, 40s and 50s though, out toward the coast and uh, mostly in the 60s for the Seward Peninsula. No change in the Bering Sea and the Aleutians. Again, highs in the 50s. Flying weather, IFR way out to the west here and then coming down into the western Aleutians. Maybe a break again here over the Pribilof Islands, but marginal VFR coastline and back to the west here and then slipping on up in through the Bering Strait. IFR in the eastern Arctic coast. Marginal VFR uh, kind of lingering here along the western Alaska range and up uh, to the north a little bit. And then this stuff here tending to diminish throughout the daytime hours of uh, eastern uh, Alaska range down to the uh, McCarthy area, Kennecott, and the North Gulf Coast looking kind of marginal, but becoming BFR over the central and southern panhandle. Passes Anatovic uh, looks good on either approach tomorrow with VFR flying, risk of a thunderstorm. Same forecast for Adigan, VFR tomorrow on either approach. Lake Clark and Merrill, marginal VFR, lowest conditions will be in the western entrance. Eastern entrances will probably be VFR. Uh, for those passes as well as rainy lowest conditions west side better to the east windy looking good uh, maybe a little marginal but Isabel same forecast and Mentesta starting out marginal becoming VFR and for Tanita VFR otherwise Portage uh, marginal to start with becoming VFR Chilkoot and White uh, marginal conditions at times throughout much of the day and freezing levels, not much of a gradient, about 8,000 feet here from the eastern interior, all the way out across the Bering Sea into Russia. And then uh, a little bit more packing here. Uh, you can see the northern pan at 8,000 feet for the uh, freezing levels, while 32 degrees occurs at 12,000 feet there over the southern southeast coast. And icing threats of uh, the mixed variety, mixed to uh, possibly uh, rhyme here along the North Gulf Coast, but uh, generally on the decrease, especially with the front having moved through the Panhandle. Uh, possibilities up here, some stuff over the Southwest interior and sliding in eastward across the Bering Sea and the band icing there over the Western Aleutians. And uh, looking at the jet stream for tomorrow, big upper level low out over the Western and uh, Central Bering Sea areas with 120 knot jet here. Well to the South now cutting in South of the Panhandle now that the front will be pushing through and be in a little more showery, cooler conditions that you get on the north side of the jet. For the uh, 9,000 foot winds, west southwesterly is blowing into the southeast coast tomorrow in the 15 to 20 knot range through here. Maybe up to 20 knots there through the uh, central Tanana Valley, but otherwise light, picking up 25 knots on the western Arctic coast. And a general, general west southwest breeze over the Bering Sea turning westerly in across the uh, Kilberg Mountains. And at 3,000 feet, a weak low here up in the North Gulf Coast, kind of spreading the gradient out, but 25 knotters on the south side of that, dropping back in toward the Panhandle. Five knots on the eastern Arctic coast, 20 knots back to the west and uh, west-southwest, 15 to 20 here through the central interior. Light winds with high pressure over the southeast bearing and the Aleutians, uh, 15 knots there ahead of that next storm coming into the western Aleutians. Turbulence, none significant to speak of. Uh, so after the break, uh, I'll return with a look at the marine forecasts. You know, the real tragedy of practically every boating-related drowning is that it could have been easily prevented. Wearing a personal flotation device, a PFD, is by far the single most important safety measure you can take when boating. It's a point we've been stressing for years and one that simply cannot be overemphasized. Look at it this way. Virtually every single boating-related drowning could be eliminated if the victim had been wearing a PFD.
It's a time of the year when most boats have long since been hauled out of the water. But for more than two million waterfowlers in North America, it's the start of their boating season. Some may use a duck boat to head out to a water blind. For others, their boat may be nothing more than a dinghy used to set out decoys. In either case, these boaters operate in one of the most hostile boating environments of all, near freezing water. Roy Legrand, recently married, had not had the chance to hunt much during the season, but he and his Labrador retriever Skeeter knew this point on the river could be a real hot spot in the right conditions. And as the wind picked up, the birds began to move and come in from the bay. Now, it looked to be the kind of day every hunter hopes for. One last duck to fill his limit. And one last retrieve for an already tired young dog. According to what Legrand later told us, a stiffening breeze and a strong outgoing tide pushed this duck beyond the dog's reach. Legrand said he knew his dog wouldn't give up on the retrieve and soon would be exhausted and in danger of drowning. A crisis, and Legrand knew he had to help. An eight-foot dinghy in a high wind and choppy water. Hardly the right rescue craft for this kind of operation. And Legrand faced the challenge of hauling a struggling 50-pound lab on board a small and unstable platform. A young, fit man and a strong swimmer, Legrand nevertheless later admitted that he thought he and Skeeter would never make it back to shore. Nothing can prepare you for the incredible and instantaneous shock to your system when you're suddenly plunged into near-freezing water. Your first reaction is an involuntary gasp, a torso reflex that can prove deadly if your head is under the water. Your heart and circulatory system undergo a tremendous strain, sometimes resulting in cardiac arrest. Consider that a man, even without clothing, if he stays active, can survive on land at 32 degrees Fahrenheit for as long as 24 hours. But cold water conducts the heat from your body some 25 times faster. Your survival time in near freezing water is literally a matter of minutes. In fact, drowning is often not the cause of death of many victims who fall into cold water. The killer? Hypothermia, the rapid and drastic chilling of the body core. After getting back into his boat, Roy Legrand was able to paddle back to the dock. His friend said it must have been his lucky day. But the reasons he came back alive had very little to do with luck. First of all, he was properly dressed for the cold. But the single most important thing he was wearing was a flotation jacket, a PFD, something like this one. By keeping him afloat, he was able to expand all of his rapidly diminishing energy into getting back to his boat and getting out of the water. Wearing a PFD is critically important when boating in cold water, even if you're an Olympic-class swimmer. If you fall in without a PFD, it'll be next to impossible to get one on while in the water. In fact, should you capsize or fall overboard in cold water, your every effort should be directed toward just one goal, getting out of the water as quickly as possible. It's a rule Roy Legrand didn't forget, and it saved his life. Never forget that water assumes an entirely different character as its temperature drops. From an element that is pleasant and refreshing during the summer, it becomes, as it gets cold, one of the most hostile environments known to man. You know, as I look at the accident reports from around the country, it's frightening to note just how many took place in circumstances where there was no obvious danger. A fisherman casting on a quiet lake, a duck hunter setting out his decoys just a few yards from his blind. The fact is, the vast majority of boating accidents happen without warning, at times when they're least expected. Far too many people who use boats as part of their outdoor recreation simply don't realize how easy it is to get into serious trouble, to actually find themselves in life or death situations. If you don't think so, consider that more outdoorsmen die from drowning or cold water exposure than for any other reason. And in the younger age groups, drowning is the second leading cause of accidental death in the country. So if your outdoor sport involves boats, 
Please take this advice to heart. Take the time to learn basic boat handling skills. Courses are available through your state or provincial agencies as well as a number of private boating organizations. If you drink, you must understand that alcohol greatly increases your chances of having an accident. If you go out when the water is cold, be prepared and know what to do in case of an emergency. If you can't swim, take a course from your local YMCA or the Red Cross. But no one should ever be embarrassed to wear a PFD. It is by far your best defense against drowning. A few preventative measures, some basic safety rules, and some common sense. Nothing complicated, but it can go a long way towards saving your life. Welcome back. Uh, there's some sea ice lingering, uh, or lingering sea ice lingering here in this area. Uh, not nearly as extensive as it was uh, a week ago, but uh, definitely on the decrease there. Otherwise, the ice well up to the north, probably at about uh, 90, 95 nautical miles due north of Barrow and maybe a little closer back to the northwest. On the uh, Marine forecast, westerlies tomorrow, 15 knots, central and south coast, maybe up to 20 knots here, and then turning more southwest and dropping off to 15 uh, back up uh, in this area. Southerly wind still in the small craft advisory levels there for Lynn Canal, and southwest at about 15 over the southern inner channels. And then light variable to westerlies in store for Tuesday over the inside waters only five to 10 knots and 10 to 15 knot winds from the west and west northwest along the uh, coastline with uh, the 15 knots here along the south coast. For south central Alaska or for Cook Inlet, southwesterlies at about 10 tomorrow. Light variable winds uh, for the uh, Barren Islands back in toward Kamishak Bay and then 20 knot winds here for the eastern Gulf Coast and southeast 15 for the central coast. Westerlies 15 for those Kodiak Island marine zones. And then uh, really laid down here for Tuesday, five to 10 knots from Cook Inlet from a variable direction all the way down into Shelikoff Strait, as well as out into the Barren Island zone. Very light westerlies here for the North Gulf Coast and uh, dead calm for Prince William Sound. For the Bristol Bay zone tomorrow, westerly winds 20 knots. Actually, this wind pattern will extend all the way down along the Alaska Peninsula. A little bit lighter here on the Pacific side of things. And then for the Tuesday outlook, uh, northwest 15 for the Bristol Bay area. Seas four feet northeast to 10 knots down the coastline there with uh, light winds also on the Pacific side of uh, the Alaska Peninsula and more of a northerly direction back up towards Sitkanak, but staying quite light, 10 knots and seas running four feet. And out over the eastern Aleutians for the Fox Islands, uh, light variable winds for Monday at 10 knots there, and then picking up to about 15 knots here for the Adak-Atka area, 20 knots in toward Damchitka Island, just west of Adak, and then dropping back to 15 knots there toward Shimian Atu. Then for Tuesday, uh, low center sliding eastward here to the south of the Aleutians. That should bring some 20 knot winds in to the area. They're mostly west of Adak, but all southeasterlies here, 15 knots for the central Aleutians, and those gradually falling back to five knots for uh, the eastern areas with seas running three to five feet, except seven feet here where the winds are a little higher. And for the uh, first, or the uh, Bering Sea, uh, westerlies at about 20 knots here. Uh, the entire stretch of the area from south of Nunavak Island, Kuskokwim Bay, right up to St. Lawrence Island, and southerlies at about 15 here from the Pribilofs up into the northern Bering Sea. 
And then for Tuesday, southwest, 15 knots here from the northern bearing right up across St. Lawrence Island. High pressure right in this area, so westerlies there, uh, north of Nunavak Island and variable to north here across Cusquam Bay there in this zone. Southeast, 5 to 10 knots for the Perbloff. Seas quite light here, or pretty slight, 3 to 4 feet, maybe up to 5 feet for the uh, St. Matthew Marine Zone, and that would be over the western areas. For the uh, Arctic coast, uh, look for 20 knot winds from the east tomorrow. Otherwise, uh, northeast at about 10, and this is the Tuesday forecast for the Arctic coast. Light variable winds there uh, for the Barra area in that central zone, then swinging around to the south only at 10. For the west side, maybe up to 15 here in that zone and southwest at 10 for the uh, Chuck CC Kotzebue Sound areas. And now here's Monday's forecast. For tomorrow, easterlies at 20, seas up to 8 feet there uh, for the eastern zone. Variable 10 for the central coast, that'll extend right down to Cape Lisbon. And uh, Wales to Point Clarence, uh, west winds at 15. And for tonight, that uh, front moving through this evening, or later on tonight, but that will uh, mean the heaviest rain will go with it, so the rain, rain will become lighter and a little more showery throughout the uh, hours and then toward morning. Otherwise, scattered showers back here to the west and up over the interior. Same story, a little drier here to the west, but this area clouds and showers will persist along this trough axis that extends up to that low over the western north slope. And just an isolated shower or two possibly reaching the eastern Arctic coast. High pressure, light winds, a lot of low clouds and fog there over the eastern Bering Sea, especially with the westerly winds pull that on shore. A weak system there over the western Aleutians dissipates uh, tomorrow and slides up to the northeast ahead of this next one coming in from the west. High pressure holding over the southeast Bering Sea. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.